Hello my darlings, it's Zui here and today I deliver you another fanfic with Bakugo in it. This time we're switching it up a bit with the fantasy AU. I hope you enjoy it just as much as I enjoyed writing it. But before I dive right into it, please remember to watch the video until the end, like or dislike and uh, please, please recommend my YouTube to other people so that more people watch it. So yeah, please do that, I would greatly appreciate it. Let's get right into it. Bakugo, king of the fire tribes, leader of the barbarians, slayer of dragons, the ultimate ground zero. These were the titles people often threw at his face. Not knowing the deep scars both externally and internally he carried due to them. And today he would begin his descent into depths he never thought he would have to take. Three months ago, a cult of demonologists had resurrected the Demon Lord, and its everlasting corruption was threatening the free kingdoms whom he was part of. In their desperation, the five lords and ladies ruling over the land elected him to acquire a new ally an ally in the form of the exiled archmages of the academy, the feared Lord Necromancers. Bakago had been given only a short briefing. He would have to scale the rotten mount and enter Al-Majik, the city of the dead. Al-Majik was the necromancer tower the three Lord Necromancers called their home. And one of them, you, were meant to become his bride. So that this army of darkness may become an ally to the free kingdoms. At first he objected, especially since he was meant to go alone. It smelled like an ambush. But he understood better than anyone that this needed to happen if there was to be any hope of defeating the Demon Lord. It had been a long journey that led him through jungles and deserts. But when he gazed upon the corrupted clouds of the rotten mount, Bakugo knew that he could no longer turn back. His fate was sealed and had left a pit in his stomach. A part of him lost before he even set foot on the first step of the tower. He now only... He was now only two days away, and he could see, feel, and taste the foul magic in the air. The twisted magic of your kin that had corrupted these lands. However, it was nothing compared to what the Demon Lord would bring. The night before he would arrive, he was anxiously staring into the blackness beyond his campfire. Shadows were moving around him, encroaching on him, feeding on his feelings of doubt. This was for the greater good. This was for survival. This was what he told himself. And then a long shadow began to reach out to the campfire. It looked like a crooked hand, but there was no being attached to it. Afraid, he took a step back, and the shadow moved under the campfire, snuffing it out, leaving him in darkness. He did not scream. He was the king of the barbarians, damn it. What could some blackness do to him? He tried to breathe as low as possible. And that's when he noticed there were no sounds. No wind. No crickets. Not even soothing moonlight. And the silence was deafening. 
Suddenly he shrieked. Something had brushed over his leg. He fell backwards on the hard ground, looking around himself as panic consumed him. He would die fighting, damn it. But before he could unsheathe his battle axe, something hit him on the back of his head, knocking him out instantly. The world was blurry, and Bakugo finally awoke. He didn't know how many hours had passed. But he told himself to start wearing a helmet from now on. The first thing he noticed, however, upon lifting his tired body was the soft feeling around him. He was no longer outside. Instead, he was inside a beautiful, or by very gothic looking room. Its walls and furniture seemingly made out of obsidian. The room even had a lit fireplace out which green flames doused the room in an eerie light. Immediately he was on high alert and jumped out of the bed. The floor was cold. And he was still wearing his normal clothes, except his boots. His axe was missing. So was his jewelry, with the exception of his amulet. He sighed in relief. While the kings in the Free Kingdoms had crowns, the barbarians had their precious amulets to show their nobility. He'd feel naked and disrespected without it. He scanned the room one more time. No windows, only a single door. No weapons. Not even something could use as one. There wasn't even a fire poker. And his bag wasn't here as well. Suddenly, the doorknob began to move. He only had seconds to decide what to do. With his heart almost bursting from his chest, he jumped into the bed and threw the blankets over his head. Bakugo could make out two pairs of footsteps. You entered with one of your ghouls. You creatures always have problems with the knobs. Next time I'll admit myself. <gasps> but my lady, that is beneath you. <gasps> the voice sounded choked. Look, they had trouble breathing. <sniffs> Silence. The footsteps came closer and then the weight on the bed shifted as you sat down next to him. Gently, you pulled back his blankets. Oh, well, at least he isn't an eyesore, came your comment. May I ask why he's exposing himself like this? It took Bakugo all his strength to not immediately jump up and start throwing insults. <gasps> my, my lady, it would be of uttermost importance to make this transition for him as easy as possible. You tilted your head and stroked over Bakugo's cheek. I guess. But my future husband will not walk around like this. Especially in front of my brother. Barbarians. Always so undignified. Bakugo growled. Aw, did I hit a nerve? You taunted. Bakugo opened his eyes and looked straight up at you. Not that he could see your face. Your entire body was covered by deep crimson robes with a very wide hood that covered most of your face. But he could still see your smile. Behind you, he could just make out the ghoul. Half undead creatures just barely intelligent enough to form full sentences. Their bodies in a constant state of rot. They needed replacements. And therefore mostly lived in graveyards and feasted on the dead. They were used as the pawns for the necromancers. You turned around. Tell my father and brother our guest has awakened. Meanwhile, I'll get him dressed. The ghoul bowed before you and then left, after fiddling with the doorknob for almost a minute. 
Meanwhile, you switched seats from his bed to a chair next to the fireplace. Bakugo, on the other hand, remained motionless for a bit. Then got back on his feet. So what? He barked at you. You pointed at the obsidian wardrobe next to him. Pick something. You ordered. What if I don't want to? You chuckled. <laughs> then your little traps have to make do without our protection. I'm well informed about the current going-ons in the country. Then you shrugged. You have to marry me for the greater good. In all honesty, you just wanted to see him get dressed. I'm not taking off my amulet. Sure, I guess. Was your only reply. Slowly, I stepped over and opened the wardrobe's door. Inside were robes. Most of them black, with your family's insignia stitched into their backs. I'm not going to wear a robe. I'm not some wizard apprentice. You didn't respond at first, but after he sat back down on his bed, crossing his arms and pouting like a child, there was no way around it. You rolled your eyes. If he was going to stay this unpleasant, he knew exactly what to do. But that may ruin his attempt at diplomacy. Fine, I'll throw you a bone. You said finally, and he scoffed. Is this a pun? Are you just calling me a dog? Ignoring his comment, you continued. We are going to be married very soon, and I'd like to make this as pleasant of an experience as possible for both me and you. So swallow your pride for just one second. Remember why we're doing this. He blinked. Please. His eyes moved to the ground. This must be as strange of an experience for you as it was for him. Really no way around it, huh? You leaned forward. What do you mean? He chuckled darkly. Oh, up until now, there was a part of me that thought I could get out of this. That I wouldn't have to. That I could stay me. He could feel his eyes watering up. He could not cry now. He couldn't. I mean, I'm being told to marry a stranger. Bind myself to a group of people and family I only heard rumors about. Bad rumors at that. Then he pointed at you. And you. You're about to marry a barbarian. <laughs> that must be humiliating. Right? You shrugged. Not humiliating, no. But it's certainly interesting, amongst other mages, your people are considered primitive. He grinned. What do you think? I think I like you way more when you aren't overreacting. Right. He scratched the back of his head. So what now? You get changed? He shook his head. No. I mean... What now? What am I supposed to do with you? You blink with mild confusion. Tomorrow, and the day after that. What are we supposed to do? Uh... Well, uh, you blushed. First we awkwardly talk, then even more... Later, we awkwardly flirt, and uh, the rest will be history. He shrugged. Sounds easy enough. Your smile suddenly turned into a grin, and you stood up. If it sounds that easy, why don't we skip the awkward talking? Try flirting with me. He thought for a moment. Were you trying something? Hopefully not. Hmm. Smiles. Is there anything more attractive than smiles? He thought. 
so he put on his most confident, soft smile possible. Then he moved closer to you. I have never done this, he said. How? You're a barbarian. So? Adorable, you thought. He must have been too busy with his pursuits for any relationship. Nice. Then he closed the gap to you. Now he towered in front of you. Now towering over you. He held out his right hand and you offered your left. Then he gently took it. Got on one knee. Kissed the back of your hand. That's what you civilized people like, right? It was an insult, sure, but it didn't feel like one. Then he got back up again and pulled back your hood. A surprised yelp escaped him. You were the most beautiful thing he ever laid eyes upon. That would definitely make it... This would, this would definitely make this arrangement easier for him. What? You murmured, almost insulted. Completely entranced by this man. You murmured, completely entranced by this man. Am I not pretty enough? No. In fact, you might be the most... No. In fact, you might be more beautiful than any woman in the Fire Tribes. You blushed again. Meanwhile, Bakugo envisioned you in full tribal wear, with war paint, dirty hair. You were too meek looking to carry a battle axe, but maybe a dagger. With your looks and magic capability, you could have been a great shaman. His hands began to slide up your arms, stopping on your shoulders. This was fine. You'd be husband and wife soon, right? His head came closer, your hairs touching. Feeling his hot breath on your face, his eyes completely fixated on yours. I want to be honest, he said in a hushed tone. <laughs> when they told me I'd marry a necromancer to create peace, I thought I'd be wed to a skeleton. You smiled. I'm no lich, and I'm not going to become one, so don't worry about that." And then he closed the distance. His lips touched yours. It wasn't animalistic, like you were afraid of. It was soft, gentle even. How could this man be capable of such actions? He was to be a vile beast of a human. And despite the forced nature of your encounter, somehow he had just conquered your heart. 